What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. We had talked previously about a prediction that was made by an analyst about a Switch quote unquote pro. Well, now there is a report that has been put out about a Switch revision of some kind that we're gonna go over today and talk a little bit about where it's coming from and maybe what I guess people can expect going forward here with it. Then we also have to talk about Sony's odd CES appearance for their PlayStation 5, very strange. Then we also saw Microsoft kind of at CES, but it was a bit of a mix up. It was very, very strange situation there with AMD. Then also it looks like Alienware is attempting their own Switch system. A lot of stuff happening yesterday with CES, so we're gonna go through this as quick as we can. As always guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, it helps out a lot. And you guys have been doing that quite a bit over the last few weeks and it has been helping out the videos. You can see it, so I do appreciate that guys. And if you are new here, make sure you subscribe down below as we head towards 400,000 subscribers. And today we're actually gonna start with Arcade 1UP. Now we were expecting them there at CES because there had been some mild teasing, but what they have uh, unveiled is exciting stuff because it's more functionality to their cabinets and it's kind of modernizing them even further. It's, it's pretty cool, so check this out. One that I was really hoping to see. We, we've seen Mortal Kombat, right? It was great to see that we saw the Turtles, but what about NBA Jam? Because they have unveiled this, at least said this is happening, and it's gonna be online. Now Arcade 1UP has announced kind of a collection of NBA Jam, NBA Hang Time, and NBA Jam Tournament Edition that will allow you to play online between cabinets. So I guess if you have one and a friend has one, you can connect them through just your internet connection. I guess it's gonna plug in through Ethernet. We'll see if there's any Wi-Fi or anything. I'm, I'm not sure there because they still have to unveil the rest of that. But the idea of arcade cabinets being able to go online from Arcade 1UP as something going forward is really cool and I love the the idea of NBA Jam as a cabinet in the first place, but the idea of also having online connectivity where you can play against your friends is great. So I'm definitely getting NBA Jam, absolutely I'm getting NBA Jam, and Sean better get it as well so we can play online together and try that out, because that is, that is really, really cool. I'm excited to see what other arcade cabinets they come up with that also go online. Also, we had some trademarks from Nintendo that they have filed, and it's interesting because uh, while I know trademarks, of course, don't always lead to something because they might just need to be uh, re-upped, essentially, so that they still stay with the company that's filing them. It's, uh, it's interesting for the group, I guess, of trademarks, as most of them were expecting games from, except for kind of one right now. Let's take a look at this as Japanese Nintendo posted all the different trademarks, which does include Pikmin, so that's, that's an interesting one. Animal Crossing, The Legend of Zelda, and Splatoon. Now, of course, Splatoon had a bit of a tease, right, where they did the New Year's thing and, the, and they said uh, SOS, and people were kind of wondering if there would be some sort of spin-off title from that, so that's one to keep an eye on. Animal Crossing, we know, has a game coming in March. Zelda, of course, will have Breath of the Wild 2 coming up, and that kind of leaves Pikmin. Now, this is for 200 purposes related to merchandising, and while it could just be, hey, we need to re-up this trademark or we lose it, it has led to speculation, as you would assume, because Pikmin 3 is kind of like a, really right now, a rumored title that would be a Wii U port to the Switch, and how long have we heard about Pikmin 4, right? I get it. But to hear about these trademarks all bunched together with some of them we know coming as games, it does kind of get the wheels turning there, and maybe we get something with Splatoon and maybe we get Pikmin as well. That would be, a, I think, a pretty good direct, like overall, or even just a year of announcements could be cool because of course, we're, we're expecting multiple uh, directs throughout the year, which also includes E3. So these could be preparing for that, but Breath of the Wild 2 is one that I wouldn't be shocked if it was set for holiday 2020. So these trademarks could actually be getting us set up for the year, we'll see. Oh, and you may be wondering what happened with that Nintendo Switch update that we were kind of looking forward to starting this week. Well, Nintendo went ahead and cleared that up. Apparently the maintenance, while it was kind of listed as an update kind of being pushed, and of course we all said, oh wow, I mean, there's some sort of new feature or something happening here with the Switch. Apparently, it's just maintenance on the server. Nintendo tweeted this out on Twitter saying, we apologize for the misleading statement and what appeared to be a new update coming out. What this means is during this maintenance period, you will not be able to update your Switch to what, 9.1.0, I think is what we're on now. So you just won't be able to access the update server that would then send information back to your Switch to then update it up to the current firmware. So no, unfortunately, no update, at least according to Nintendo right now, that doesn't mean one won't be coming in the near future or anything, just means that maintenance window that we saw that appeared to be a new update 
was not that. It's just backend's work that they are doing and you just won't be able to access the updates. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start with this, this Switch revision, Switch Pro, who really knows, new Nintendo Switch. We've been talking about the idea of this for what feels like years now. It's at least been popping up here and there. Last year, there was uh, there were all these predictions made by analysts at times and even uh, uh, things kind of being put out there that there would possibly be two Switch revisions. We got one, which was that Switch Lite, which originally we thought of as the Switch Mini, but the other one just kind of just disappeared, right? Well, now it seems like we might be building to another situation similar to what we had with the Switch Lite, where there were reports coming out and it seemed to get more and more clear cut as we went because supply chains were getting involved with the reporting and it did eventually lead to that Switch Lite, which means if this is correct, we should see more and more things coming out going forward, but we actually have a report from Digitimes for all of this. Now what we're getting from Digitimes, according to them from people within the supply chain for Nintendo, and I, I guess just overall creating this system and getting it done as they're ordering and getting ready to manufacture it for, according to them, mid 2020, as in, I, I assume summer to late summer, just ahead of when we would start talking about the Xbox Series X and maybe whatever else they have with that one. And then the PS5. Now with Digitimes report, they said, Nintendo attends, intends to release the new Switch model with a magnesium alloy body and an update to the CPU. Now, an update to the CPU or an updated CPU could mean a lot of things. It could mean that it ships as it is now with updated clocks and who knows on that end. They're very vague about the uh, the CPU part, okay? That's, that's the big thing. However, they have specifically named magnesium alloy and really that's used in, at times, higher end laptops, for example, uh, phones, you might have the framing kind of made out of it. And it's just, it's a metal that's strong, but also very light include, I mean, it's very close to plastic in how light it is. And of course that would mean that the switch would appear to be, if the body was made out of all metal, that would appear to be a more premium style, wouldn't it? Now it's very possible Nintendo could make a new Nintendo Switch that is not like ultra powerful. It could be a little stronger if they changed clock speeds, for example. They could do some other little updates in there as well. And they could label it as like a more powerful switch, but not like, not like stupid powerful. Not like, it's not gonna be like a, like a PS4, for example, in your hands. It's just something they could do. And then they could charge a premium because it looks premium. I mean, that's the biggest thing that people kind of gravitate towards for a lot of these the, these electronics is if it looks premium, they're willing to pay a premium price. It's just kind of how it's been. And when I say premium with Nintendo, if this is the way that they are going here, it could possibly be like a $400 system, right? What we know right now, just in case it kind of gets thrown around right now is a CPU. Again, this is according to Digitimes, a CPU upgrade of some sort, and then a magnesium alloy body or framing. The one thing I will say about the Switch currently after taking it apart as many times I have, there is a lot of uh, extra space that could be made just by removing the framing that is inside to make up for the plastic exterior that would be very, very easy to just bend in half without it. Now, if I guess if you have like an all metal body that would be stronger, you might not need all that space inside. I almost wonder if this could be a way to make it slimmer even, although if you do that, would it be compatible with the current dock and Joy-Con controllers? And that's kind of the issue we're getting into here, right? You kind of look at that, it has to be compatible with the other stuff that currently exists. It's a whole thing there. But the report is interesting to keep an eye on. I also want to point out, Digitimes has been spotty with their track record, especially leading up to the Switch when it was coming out. So also keep that in mind right now. But it is a report that's been put out there, and it's even being picked up by people from the Wall Street Journal, uh, Dr. Serkin Toto, who had made the original prediction that we talked about before for the Switch Pro. So there is a lot of smoke around the idea of a Switch revision. And you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if there really was another Switch revision for 2020. Mid 2020 is not far away. So we shouldn't have to wait too long after E3, I guess, to find out about this or maybe another. Look, if it really is this easy to get this information, Digitimes was able to get it there should be more reports coming out. So we'll see uh, We'll see what other information comes out as we get closer to this apparent mid-2020 release. Next up, let's talk about Dell's 
Alienware Switch. It sounds weird, right? But hey, I mean, the Switch has proven to be a very popular concept. The hybrid gaming concept is very popular right now, right? So we've seen Razer attempt it with their own little attachment for phones. And now looks like Dell and their Alienware line is gonna attempt, it seems anyway, I'm gonna say it seems because this is CES and sometimes things don't actually I come out of CES and get sold to consumers, right? They just like to show stuff off and ideas off, really. But check this out. They tweeted this out, and it this, this is their shot, apparently, at a, uh, at a Switch. They say, we're always pushing what's possible in the realm of gaming, introducing our newest gaming innovation, Concept UFO. Watch the official unveiling. That will be uh, today at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So, okay, we'll... Okay, well, I guess we'll get some video of it at least. We'll check that out, see if there's any new information about it. However, several places did get a chance to sit down with it and actually try it, like CNET and some others, and it seems okay. Like, it's it's not pushing games very well, apparently. You have to turn a lot of things down, but they were able to do stuff like have it dock to a monitor through the USB-C port on the top and a few other things they've been able to achieve as well. But yes, it is trying to be a handheld PC that still has Windows 10 on it. So there are some issues trying to get all that to work together. They had to do like a custom UI over top of it. Um, it's not as refined, we'll say, as the Switch and its OS. Now, one thing I do like that they have also followed through with here is that apparently the controllers that mimic Joy-Cons obviously also attached through magnetic slots on the side so that they do feel much more sturdy than the Joy-Con controllers that kind of like sit in through a, a railing system and you can move them, right? Like you can feel them kind of creaking around that makes the Switch feel a bit cheaper, right? Or, or less solid. I like that idea and I hope Nintendo looks into using maybe magnets on the side and like the, the next gen Switch years from now. It's just a little improvement that kind of the market has taken over. So I, I mean, I like that idea at least, but We'll see what their video is today on this thing. I, I'm not 100% sold on what I'm seeing so far, but hey, the hybrid concept's cool, and you know what, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a bad idea to have like a little portable PC like that, that'd be kinda cool. Next up, let's talk about the Xbox Series X. We had some interesting stuff happen yesterday with this system. First, Phil Spencer decided to update his profile picture to the SOC, or the system on a chip, from the Series X is a big picture of this, this big gold chip, and it's kind of similar looking to the Xbox One X's chip, although it actually looks a little bigger even than that one. And you can you can see all the components kind of all around the die, and then on the die, if you look at it, it says Project Scarlet, and then, interestingly enough, 8K. Now, if you looked at the Xbox One X's chip, it said 4K on it, this one says 8K. So are they shooting for 8K? Well, it's directly on the chip, so I assume so, or that would be an odd thing to put there. I do wonder if it's more or less them preparing for the future with just upscaling, checkerboard rendering. Yeah, there's a lot of things, tricks they can do to make it look good, but not necessarily still be native 8K. And I mean, 8K sets are getting down in price, believe it or not. It's still looked at as obviously like something that's too far in the future. You can go to Best Buy and buy it for like, 2000 to 2500 I think now, which is a lot for a TV, yes. Especially because that would be a lower end, I guess, 8K set. But what that tells me is that in like three or four years, when we're like halfway to, uh, almost halfway through the Series X and the PS5 lifespan is that a lot of people will probably be upgrading to 8K sets. So I, I get why they're at least gonna make it 8K compatible. Take like the original Xbox VCR unit that has no 4K compatibility, whereas they had to release the Xbox One S just to get 4K compatibility for streaming and HDR. So a little bit of future proofing there. That's just good for the overall purchase of the Series X. I get that. Otherwise, there's not a lot else you can really take from this chip. People may try to try to get actual measurements of it, but for the most part, we'd have to wait for an actual X-ray of this thing to really see what's going on there. Oh, and the, just a weird thing also took place with this system. AMD did like this, this video of it, and they showed the Series X because of course they, they're gonna be powering the chip that, that's in this system, right? They're gonna be providing it and, and working with Microsoft to make it and it's this very powerful SOC, I get all of that. But they showed like a rendering of it and it did this large sweep around the system and it showed the back. And if you remember, when I was looking at the Series X, I, I said, man, I really wish we had seen the back of this system. Just see the IO ports on the back. What, what are we dealing with here? Are they gonna keep the two HDMI port configuration like we have now? I assume 
assume they're not because they haven't said anything really about TV being <laughs> working with this system, but they did the sweeping shot and they showed the back of it. And everyone freaked out because they showed the IO, IO, uh, the IO ports and it showed multiple HDMI ports, multiple USB-C ports, which was, was kind of neat to see that, right? And then at the bottom, we also saw just a standard plug that uh, that really looked like it wouldn't need a, an, inter, or a, an external power supply, which was always frustrating to have that large box. And I'm glad they did away with that with the One S and the One X. There's just one problem that wasn't actually from Microsoft. They got that rendering, it seems, from another site that sells renderings of the Xbox Series X. Brad Sams actually tweeted this out, just kind of talking about a statement from Microsoft saying the Xbox Series X imagery used during the AMD CES press conference was not sourced from Microsoft and does not accurately represent the design or features of the upcoming console. They were taken from TurboSquid.com. If you go look at TurboSquid.com, they sell the rendering for like 10 or $12, depending on a sale that they're running. So I guess they just bought it from there and just used it as part of their video to say, hey, look, we do the Series X chip. Check it out. We're going to rotate around and, uh, oh, there are some ports. Hopefully that's the right configuration. <laughs> uh, weird on AMD's part because couldn't they just go ask Microsoft? I'm it's, The only reason I can see that is that they were like pressed for time or something. It's just strange that they would put the Series X in there and not consult Microsoft about the ports on the back if they were legit or not because there were other renderings on that site that just didn't have ports on the back and you could put something that's like early rendering, you know, not, you know, it's not actually uh, what the final product. So don't take it too seriously. Just strange, strange stuff there. And in our last bit of news, Sony did have their CES press conference and they actually did more PlayStation stuff than a lot of people were thinking. Some people thought there wouldn't be any PlayStation stuff. No one would show up on stage. They would just say, oh yeah, PlayStation, that's a thing. We, we own that, it's doing well. Moving on, they did some stuff there, but they might as well not have done anything, that, to be honest. All right, so they have Jim Ryan come out on stage. He talks about how well the PlayStation 4 has been doing. 106 million units, he says, has sold, which does seem like it is on a bit of a decline, right? I think we just heard about, what, 102 million or something, so a little bit of a decline. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It's, it's crossed 100 million. That's like the mark that you shoot for, I get it. And uh, for Sony, that would be three of their four systems have hit 100 million units for home consoles. So yes, the uh, basic status quo there for, for Sony. They also said that the PlayStation VR has sold five million units, which for VR, not great for the install size of the PS4, but for VR, that's that's big time just for VR. Although the Oculus Quest seems to be selling really well. It's definitely not selling like PlayStation VR well though. So we'll keep that in mind. The PlayStation VR still like the king of VR headsets, but then they start talking about the PlayStation 5. It's a lot of stuff we already know about. They point out, you know, the SSD, the haptic feedback uh, on the controller, the adaptive triggers. They didn't say anything about backwards compatibility, which I thought was odd. I thought they would say, oh, it works with PS4 games, maybe PS1 games, I, they might be saving that for a big reveal at their own event. I Okay, I get that. And that event hopefully happens in the next few months. I'm crossing my fingers for February or late January, but we'll see all of that. But then they made a big deal about something that should have been like a press release. The PlayStation 5 logo. Go ahead and just picture it right now. What do you think the PS5 logo is gonna look like? Because whatever you just pictured is probably exactly what they showed us. It was this, it was just the, Yep, the PS5 is super different than the PS4 logo. Uh, no, it's, I don't know. I guess they were like, here's the PS5 logo. We, we actually brought something here and underwhelming, yeah, obviously. But hey, we now know what the PS5 logo looks like. It is literally just PS5 and... That, that's it. That was their CES run. It was, it wasn't great, but, but hey, they are holding out, I think, for their own event, and then they'll roll into E3, probably with a price point and a ton of games, and then we'll roll into release in uh, November. They even say, hey, keep an eye out. In the coming months, we'll have something. So uh, look forward to that, right? Microsoft will even probably have their own event before E3, and then E3 is going to be crazy this year. Oh man, all these companies are showing up. Nintendo's probably going to bring some killer games and the Switch is like prime year of its of its uh of its overall life and that that's going to be pretty cool to see. And then Microsoft and Sony will be prepping for big launches of their systems. So 
All three, I think, are going to show up there very, very strong this year, and uh, it's going to be fun in June when E3 hits. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day, as you're seeing here. This is from Finnish, uh, Finnish Manny saying, Wii U games coming to Switch. There's always a twist, and that's the price. It's the full price. You know what? That is something I can agree with. I think the Wii U ports are just, they're just, I think they're too expensive for when they come over. They are ports from the last-gen system, right? I mean, do any of us really want to pay $60 for any game? No, not really. Most of the time, I'm going to get cheaper. So it is a bit odd that the games come over and they are full price, especially when you have a game like, uh, oh, Tropical Freeze, where it was actually more expensive after it was ported. It was 50 on the Wii U, then it's 60 on the Switch. Now, Nintendo knows they're going to get their money, so that's why they do it. I, the, one that, the one that got me was uh, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, because at least I can argue and say, hey, you know what? Tropical Freeze is an awesome game. It is just really, really, really good. If you want a good platformer, that's the one to get. I think you'll get your money's worth. But like New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, I looked at that and I said, oh, really? That's 60? Uh, I don't know about that. And then Mario Maker 2 comes out a bit later anyway. But still, it is odd because you look at like Sony, for example, and they did Shadow of the Colossus, which apparently, according to Bluepoint, that was a big big porting job like it was harder than you would think for that and they got it done and it was 40 then we see things like medieval come out and it's 30 and so yeah i i get that you see other companies doing these type of uh these ports and they're cheaper but hey nintendo uh they, they they're gonna take a shot with their properties and if it doesn't sell they'll lower the price then maybe they'll part of like uh you know what they need they need a nintendo switch selects soon we're going to the third year i think that's a good time to introduce that where we just have cheaper games and like different box art you know with like the maybe like a different type of a border around it for a nintendo switch selects like they did with of course like something like the 3ds and they had links uh link between world in there and a few others that'd be cool to have that for the switch and of course that that means that all the Wii U ports could probably get thrown in that barrel and uh, then everyone can start getting them for much cheaper, just not necessarily at launch. And ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be here for News Wave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit the like button. It really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it's this, this report around a Switch revision of some kind. They weren't able to say if it was like a super powerful Switch or anything, just that Nintendo is apparently getting supplies from suppliers to build a Switch apparently out of metal instead of plastics. That's, that's interesting. We'll see. What do you think about that idea and if it's correct and all this? There's a lot of stuff, a lot of moving parts going into 2020, especially into the holidays. So we'll see about all of this there. What about Sony's appearance at CES or Microsoft and uh, their Series X chip that they put on there? Oh, what about Alienware's own Switch? Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.